Greetings, everyone. Thank you for joining us today. Uh, we're delighted to have Dr. Seba joining us for a lecture, um, but I wanted to first say that if you would like to view this session in Spanish um, with Spanish subtitles, then you may click the registration link below and we will send you a private YouTube links to each session. These will be available one to two days after each session airs live. And we will put this announcement in our chat as well as in our Facebook. Um, chat function so that you can see uh, how to access all of that. But uh, I do want to take a moment to um, welcome Dr. Rosangela Seba for her lecture entitled Brazilian Chirinos, the Ragtime from Brazil. Uh, Dr. Seba is a professor of piano at Mississippi State University, where she coordinates the piano area for the Department of Music and the Community Music School. She teaches applied lessons, piano literature, theory, and ear training. Her performances include solo, chamber music, piano four hands, two piano repertoire, and her CD album called Eight Sonatinas for the Sonata and the Sonata for Piano Solo by M. Camargo Guarnieri was released in 2010 as the first and only recording of the works. Besides being the principal pianist of the Starkville MSU Symphony Orchestra, Dr. Seba has been a soloist with other orchestras in Brazil and in the US with a wide variety of repertoire from Mozart, to Beethoven, to Guarnieri, and Saint-Saëns. Currently, she's a reviewer for the American Music Teacher Magazine and has published arrangements of Brazilian music for different instruments. She is a Steinway artist. Welcome, Dr. Seba. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Um, I think I'm going to share my screen right now. Um, let's see. I would like to thank the, all the people involved in the Puerto Rico Collaborative Piano Institute, especially uh, Jessica Toby, for um, being working with me in making this lecture possible. So this lecture is about the Chorinhos, which is a style or genre of music um, known from Brazil only. It is considered the ragtime from Brazil. This picture a painting right behind uh, that I use is uh, from Candido Portinari, which is an Italian Brazilian uh, painter, and it is titled Chorino, uh, and he was a neorealism real, realism, uh, uh, painting. So right now, what we have is what is Chorino? A lot of people say uh, is this Corinho, Corinho, Corino, and a lot of people un don't understand the style that involves the term shooting. The literally translation of the word is little cry or little lament, and that has to do with the description of how people sang at the time. Like the blues, it's always a, a description of the social cultural events in Brazil. Shorinho is the same. It originated in 19th century especially um, mid to the end of 1800s in Rio de Janeiro, considered the first Brazilian genre of popular music. And what is the characteristic of it? It's syncopated rhythms. They are duple meter in moderate to fast tempo, sub subtle modulations and improvisatory fields. So when I say duple meter, it's usually the other dances besides the waltz. The waltz, if there's any shooting with a subtitle, waltz would be in triple meter. And composed in three sections. It's very um, uh, rondo in rondo style. I'm going to talk about that later. So instrumentation. Originally played by a trio, flute, cavaquinho, which is a small four-stringed guitar, and a guitar later played by a combination of different instruments, such as flute again, cavaquinho guitar, and then they started adding clarinet, saxophone, trumpet, trombone, pandeiro, and a singer. So what is pandeiro? Pandeiro is a percussive instrument, round, and um, it served as the rhythm section of the group. Some were written solely for the piano, and some had lyrics, that's why they added the singer. So the mus musicians that sang this chorinho, they were called regionais, the group itself. When it, it was performed in a group, they call regionais, regionals. And the, each musician was called chorões, criers. In the group formation, 
the way that they 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 um, sat down and performed was called roda de choro, cry circle, because it was in a semicircle or sometimes in a circle. There was not a conductor at the time. You can see this one. This is now a, perf um, a, a recent performance of a group called Choro das Três, which is three sisters. And um, I think one of them, the one playing the pandeiro is the father. And right now what you have is one to nothing by Pichiguinha and Benedito Lacerda. Pichiguinha was a, a, a musician that came later uh, in also called Chorão. And Benedito Lacerda was his partner in writing music as well as writing the lyrics. And this group is now performing in the style of regionais, Roda de Choro. So what you heard is the cavaquinho, the one that looks like a, a, a guitar, and it's very improvisatory. So one of the characteristics that you're going to find is it has traditional forms. It, the forms came from Europe, and I'm going to mention them later and why. And the harmonies are very simple. Sometimes you're going to have a secondary dominant, secondary leading tone, but nothing. And the modulation will not happen within, within the section. It will happen from one section to another. And when modulating, it will follow the traditional modulation, which is going to the neighboring tones or neighboring keys. So one of the most used form and the most traditional form is the rondo, which is A, B, A, C, A with every section sometimes you're gonna excuse me sometimes you're gonna have an introduction as well so every end of section you're gonna have a, re a repeated bar line the only time that you're gonna repeat the a section is at the beginning so when you move back to to the a section you are all always gonna play once including the the last section this is a, a performance practice it's not written so this is something that uh, pianists and other musicians have done for, for, for centuries. Each section has two to four phrases. 
very European style. Each phrase has four measures long, also following the European style. And cadences are usually authentic, imperfect or perfect, and have cadences. It always depends what comes next, what key comes next. In the history, now I'm going to explain a little bit more about what Chorinho is. Um, it resulted in, a, in a, a mingle or a combination of European influence happened in Brazil because it, we were colonized by Portuguese people and the Africans that came as uh, to become slaves in Brazil. And so the dances that really influenced the Chorin were tangos from Spain, waltzes, polka, mazurkas, Scottish, abanera, and then from Africa, the lundu, the batuki, and machixi. And where were they performed? Um, usually in streets, in bars, uh, outside bars, or serenades, parties, and informal gatherings at homes. Those informal gatherings were uh, called assustados, um, scared, kind of a happy, kind of a, a happy event. Now, I'm going to take a little break here and explain what's the difference. So what you heard was a hodded shur, a shur circle or a cry circle. Those were specific performed in, in the streets, in bars, and sometimes in gatherings outside the house. Now, if the family was um, a high society family, this was not in good taste. They didn't consider this as something suitable for the inside house. So a lot of that gathering inside as after dinner or a social event, they usually perform with a pianist. And if there was any other instrumentalist, it would be the flautist, or rarely a singer if the music had lyrics. It became a social event. Later, they brought it to be performed in radios. And much later, at the end of the 1800s, is when you're going to find some of the chorões or uh, shooting performers performing concert halls, but this was really rare. It just happened its uh, first time with um, Gottschalk. He was in Brazil and he was performing in a concert hall and invited Ernesto Nazare to perform with him, uh, Antonio Calado as well. So Joaquim Antonio da Silva Calado is considered the first chorão uh, and the name Chorinho, he gave the name Chorinho to the genre. So he was a composer and a virtuoso flautist. So the first ensemble, which was flautist, cavaquinho and guitar, was because he was a performer. He was born to a family of former slaves and considered the creator of the show genre. Influenced many composers, including his band, his band man, member, Chiquinho Gonzaga, which um, she started working with him for a, a matter of necessity for her. And he, in a way, by him accepting the first time a woman performing such ensembles became uh, a, a green card for her to also become a shori, uh, shorona. So again, his first concert was with God Shock in, in 1869. And because of that, his uh, music became a little bit more popular, not only in Brazil, but outside Brazil. He has composed hundreds of music. I just have here some of the most important ones. And the ones um, with um, underline and with uh, the asterisk, it is, they are the, the most important one. I want to call attention to the Flor Amorosa which is the second column, uh, fourth line, which was his first shooting published and became famous. And then after that, he could compose and, and have more of a venue for his music. So I'm going to show you some of uh, the arrangements that we can have. And again, shootings, it's not stipulated by one instrumentation. You have usually for a pianist or and then they rearrange, orchestrated. And right now, 
I'm going to share this um, Chiquinha Gonzaga called Atraente, Attractive. And this is one of the examples, and I hope it works. <laughs> there we go. And this is um, written for piano only. I'm going to interrupt because I would like to go back to the uh, uh, my, my lecture and later on uh, I want to also uh, show this video like right now I want to show you my arrangement that I did of that and again I have played with flute and piano I have played with flute bassoon and piano I have played with clarinet bassoon and piano and this is a recording that we just did um, during the pandemic and so we we were not able to perform live in, in one of the events, so we recorded and this is for clarinet and bassoon and piano. So you have an idea that those are possibilities that we can have when we are playing shootings. The next one that I would like to show is Fon Fon. Fon Fon was a magazine at the time. Um, it's also the honk of a car. And what I would like to show here is the piano music that was written um, specifically, and then some arrangements as well. But I'm gonna cut short because we are running out of time. And again, I'm sorry to interrupt, but I am realizing that I'm running out of time. And this is a, an arrangement that I made for this time, flute, bassoon, and piano. Oh, that is not the one that I want. Just a second.
I'm going to move forward. And this is another uh, composer that I'm going to talk about later, Zequinha de Abreu. Same, uh, this is for piano only. And um, this is Sururu na Cidade. interrupt that and show an arrangement that I did. And again, this is a video that two of my colleagues and I um, recorded. Sorry to interrupt, but that, that will be something that I, I have to move forward. <laughs> so let's talk about the composers. Uh, the first one, Chiquinha Gonzaga, which is a contemporary of uh, Joaquin Calado. And I am a fan of her for many reasons. One is that she's a composer, first really composer and conductor and pianist, a professional pianist in Brazil. She made a living teaching during the days but then at night she was being a professional pianist. Um, she was born on, uh, to an aristocratic family, although illegit child, uh, but she was raised by her father. She never fit to the society, to the norms. A woman ahead of her time in many ways. She was the first one that really uh, asked for a divorce. And later she had um, two children from different uh, fathers, but became an independent. The family kind of um, uh, didn't accept her style of life, and she decided to just take care of her own life and, and be become a musician um, instead of a housewife. She was an innovator with her view of national music. She introduced the mashishi, mashishi which was uh, an African dance that was not welcome in the um, social events. She introduced it in her music. In, putting different words like um, tango, uh, Brazilian tango or polka mashishi. She always put in a European dance together with the mashishi. And she also wrote operetas and, and plays. And she had her own orchestra. She conducted and she, she composed and she made a living uh, being a professional musician. Besides that, uh, her music, she would knock on people's door to sell the music, and with the money, she was um, freeing slaves. She was also a woman that fought for the women's right and the proclamation of the Rep Republic. I'm, have, I'm, I'm seeing some, if there's any question, I would like to just go ahead and ask me, because I'm seeing some chat, but I don't see the chat, I just see the numbers. So feel free to ask me questions and, and Jessica to interrupt me. Yes, I do have some questions. So okay. maybe it may be something you're getting to, but um, um, Ceylon Mitchell has asked uh, if you could explain some of the typical Brazilian Chorino rhythms. And then yeah. also his follow up was he's a flutist and he's looking to perform Toro, so the pianist, in addition to guitar and cavaquinho. So do you have any resources to find sheet music? Yes, um, the Chiquinho uh, Gonzaga has. Uh, well, the, the society has its own uh, um, website. Zequinha de Abreu, the same thing. Um, we have several arrangements uh, available in the internet. I can send him, if he contacts me later, I can send him some information and I'll be happy to share my arrangements also with him. I have 12 so far of different composers and for flute, bassoon and, and piano or flute, clarinet, and piano. 
I will be happy to, to share that. And also he can go to the website. Uh, it's uh, if he Google Chiquinha Gonzaga, Francisca Gonzaga is her name, but nickname Chiquinha. It, you can find the same music with different arrangements. Did I answer the question? <laughs> I will let you know. He said yes, he would like that resource and also thank you. You're if welcome. You, if you're okay with it, I will privately send him your email um, so he can reach out to you. That would be great. No problem okay. at all. Great. Also, he asked about the rhythms. The rhythms are syncopations within the beat, ta 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 ta, or ta pa 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 pa, like the abanera rhythm. And, but there's no ties, and that's one thing uh, through the bar line. That's something that in, in Brazilian music, we don't have that. The downbeat in Brazilian music is very important because it's always based on dances. So if you don't have the downbeat, then it kind of um, makes the dance quite hard to, to, to perform. And uh, I just want to also say that Chiquinha Gonzaga was the first woman to establish copyrights in Brazil because her music was being sold by other people, and uh, she she lived on that uh, on her music. She needed to make sure that the composers will get the money that they deserved. So here she wrote over four hundred works, and here are the ones that are most famous: Atraente, attractive, that you just heard, Bione, which it's it's an Indian name for a goodbye, Forrobodo, which is a, a dance, a kind of a party. Gaúcho, which is a, a, a cowboy from the south, Lua Branca, which is a white moon, and O Abrialas. O Abrialas, it's still performed in Brazil as one of the uh, carnival marches. And again, it's a woman, composer, writing for samba, writing for carnival, writing chorinhos for parties late at night. So she was pretty much a scandal in Brazil at the time. Not only that, her, her music, Corta Jaca, which is the one in the bottom here that I didn't mention before because I wanted to say that this is a machishi that for the first time was performed in a presidential um, palace, well, palace or, or um, where the president lived. His wife um, performed the guitar, and that was one of the scandals in Brazil. People were very offended by having such music performed instead of Brahms, Chopin, Schumann. And we have Ernesto, Ernesto Nazaré, another composer. Now he has a very um, strange life because he always was kind of a frustrated pianist. He was a composer, pianist, pianist for silent movies and sheet music demonstrators. So we had stores in Brazil that they would sell music, but also they would sell drinks uh, like water, soft drinks or some, uh, not soft drinks at the time, but any other uh, products like what would become the the stores that now we have everything clothes and all and they would demonstrate their music so people would come and say oh, I, I would like to hear this music and see how it sounds and so he would sit down and play he had a fabulous sight reading skills but he was also um, somebody that wanted to be a concert pianist so he was classically oriented and if, mm, very influenced by Chopin. When I say oriented, not trained, is because he only had eight lessons with a professional uh, piano teacher. Later, his mother was the one in charge of his uh, training. Uh, he composed over 200 works. His popularity was achieved mainly because he was playing in movie theaters. So before the show, they had a lobby where you, they would have a pianist or a small orchestra. Villa Lobos did that with him. He was the pianist of the orchestra that Villa Lobos performed. And sometimes he would play during the silent movie show. So he's most famous for Odeon. Odeon is the cin cinema name in Brejeiro, which means a feisty. First to perform in a radio program and reach it international acclaim it's funny that he was introduced to um, Arthur Rubenstein, who was a friend of Villa Lobos. But when he went to perform for Rubenstein, he didn't perform his music. He was too shy and didn't feel that he was worthy of showing his music. So he played Chopin for him. It was very interesting. So here is his music, all 
at, at several of them. And I would like to show a video how he his music became international uh, known. This is a Hollywood movie. And Irene and Vernal Castle were uh, dancers, just like um, Fred Astaire and Ginger Rogers, but they were the first ones. <clears throat> and he, here's his mashishi. <clears throat> So this music is called Engozo, and it's, it's an, another mashishi. But again, he was only using that after Chiquinha Gonzaga had used the term mashishi. And one of the last ones that I would like, like to talk about, they are not the only ones, but they are the most famous one, is Zequinha de Abreu. Again, a composer, pianist uh, for silent movies, a sheet music demonstrator for music stores, and door to door music seller. Uh, he was also a con conductor and a county clerk, politician, and school teacher. His mother wanted him to be a school teacher instead of a musician. And again, he did that because like Ernesto Nazaré, they had to make a living. And it was quite hard to be at, at that time living off being just a musician or just as being a musician. Composed over 200 works, mainly for piano. And his most famous work is Chico Chico no Fubá, or Chico Chico, that everybody knows about, and had an orchestra performing different social events. And again, they were in charge of composing, rehearsing, uh, hiring the, the musicians, trying to find events to perform, really an independent uh, musician at the time. So right now, what you're going to hear, and again, his music, he wrote over 200 works, what you're going to hear is a performance of Chico Chico, an arrangement for uh, Roda de Chor, which is a, a circle, a cry circle of, of musicians that Carmen Miranda, Carmen Miranda brought to Hollywood with her called Bando da Lua, the band, uh, moon band or band of the moon. And this is a movie, Hollywood movie in, from 1947, Copacabana. And at first, they didn't want to show her dancing, just the music. But later on, they thought, well, it would be nice to have uh, show her performance. Such, she was such a showwoman. <laughs> I 
I see that there are some people chatting. Uh, Jessica, do you, is there any question for me so far? Oh, a comment um, just from another attendee saying that they can definitely see and hear that ragtime influence. Um, yes. And then another one is, um, were most of these uh, Chirinos based on existing folk songs and tunes or no. were many of them original songs? They are original songs. Now, this is something that it's very interesting because, uh, and this is, I'm not stating this, I have read many, many researches, um, including one that says that because Gottschalk was uh, the first American really uh, virtuoso pianist, he was traveling around the world, especially in South American Caribbeans. And he stayed in Rio. They believe that he influenced the shooting. Now, some people will say that it was the opposite. Uh, Darius Mio, for example, Mio uh, music, um, Scaramouche, was influenced by Brejeiro, the Brejeiro song. He, Mio was a, a cultural attaché from the French embassy, and he heard Ernesto Nazaré music, and he was crazy about shootings. And because of that, many of his music had that flavor, but one of that became very, uh, famous, including some harmonies and some rhythms is Scaramouche for two pianos and later arranged for saxophone and piano. So I'm not stating who influenced who, but it, it's very clear that there has been a lot of um, similarities between the two genres. Another observation slash comment is the sort of a side-by-side a, a -side comparison of the American ragtime, especially for piano. Um, versus some of these Chirinos is the, in American ragtime, often the left hand is like the metronome, very stable, always on the quarter beats, like you mentioned earlier, downbeats, of course. Um, but usually there's not a lot of syncopation in the left hand, it's mainly in the right hand or in the higher um, register instruments. Is this true also of Chirinos or is there sometimes syncopation in the left hand as well? No, or the, the, lower voice? Happened, the syncopation happened most of the time in the left hand, yes. But, and, and again, there's no swing. It's always very uh, metronomic uh, because of the dances. And there's always the downbeat. So there's no, if there's in straight eight notes, um, you don't swing the eight notes, you just play the eight notes as they are. But the syncopation in the left hand um, happens quite a lot. I don't know if I, if you allow me, but... Um, <laughs> This is the Brejeiro that I, I was talking about, and that influenced um, a, a lot of uh, the composers. Uh, another one is the Little Chicks in the Backyard. Now you can hear the, the syncopation in the left hand pretty clear in this one. I don't know if you, you heard me playing or not. But. Yes, that came up through very clearly. Thank you. All right. All right. We have another observation here. The very famous song and performances all over the world, the influence of South American music folklore and the Brazilian churinos is evident in music in the Mediterranean, especially, especially the popular idioms. Um, one of our panelists who's from Greece says she grew up with this music and it's some of her mother's favorite. Oh my gosh, did, I did not know that. This is wonderful to know. I, I didn't know that it was, uh, you know, had in such an impact in the Mediterranean countries. That That's great. That's great to know. Thank you so much for sharing that. So the arrangements that we have, and I'm going to share this uh, because it's not set in an instrument. You are going to have sometimes most piano because that was the easiest way of, of playing their music. And again, Brazil was considered the piano country. When the royal family came to Brazil, they opened the ex, uh, importation of uh, things from Europe and pianos came to Brazil. So they, the society thought, if I want to be accepted in the high society, I have to have a piano. So also was a manner also, also to sell music easily. And it's cheaper to pay one pianist than a group of musicians. So. This is Chico Chico no Fubá. I'm going to show several of the arrangements that you can find. This is in YouTube. Uh, let's see. 
I'm going to skip that um, and use the one that I already have. And again, you can see the syncopation in the left hand. And then I would like to show the same music. And this is my arrangement of Chico Chico. Food. And again, I, I really apologize for um, the finale sound, but I just couldn't get in touch with my friends to record this version. Um, so I had to use the finale version that I have. And here is a guitar for hands guitar uh, that I have. Um, I have found in the internet, and this is a famous duel. And again, uh, we have another arrangement of the same music. And this time is for the orchestra. This is a youth orchestra from Northeast of Brazil. And this is a performance that they, they gave um, in France. Thank you. 
So I, um, I I have more to say, but I, I probably need to stop. And these are the four most important uh, shoroins. We I, I did not include Pixinguinha and others, but uh, Chiquinha Gonzaga, uh, Joaquim Calado, who was the first one, Ernesto Nazaré, Isaac de Abril. Here are some online sources that I used, um, uh, and I can share more if you want. I have others that I have not used for this lecture. And here are books and dissertations. Uh, I want to call attention to a friend of mine, which he, he I just got his book last year. It's called Como é bom poder tocar um instrumento. How, how good it is to be able to play an instrument. And here is his name, Robert Valdo Linhares Rosa. He talks a lot about the pianist or piano music makers. And he brings a different light to the society at the time, as well as their important work to bring the shorin and the, the popular genre to the high society and also the influences that later happen in the music made in Brazil. So I would like to thank you all. If there's any question, Jessica, I, I see that there are more people chatting. <laughs> yeah, so just some comments that, 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 that um... The video was so fun to watch of the orchestra performing it and um, bravo and um, Dr. Seba, this is a wonderful presentation. We want more. Thank you. We would love to know how to find this repertoire. Some students would love it and so would I. So, yes. Um, I would be happy if you share my email okay. with them. I will be happy to share the information that I have as well as some arrangements. My arrangements are now being uh, published in JW Pepper, but I, I'm still in the process of getting things done with them. There's so many rules and, and laws that I have to, to be able to do it, but I personally will be able to share that with you. I shared your, your email with um, the attendees in the webinar here. So yes, oh, this is so exciting. Do you often see these performed with dancers as well, or is it mainly no. just, no? Okay. No, it, it's not a requirement. I mean, it's hard to stand still. Um, so, <laughs> but sometimes people just dance. I have performed my shootings with my group. I have a trio, the, the one that you saw, clarinet and bassoon. I also have a quartet sometimes. Um, we just perform because we want to perform together and have fun, but we do not have dancers uh, when we perform them. Now, they were mainly uh, for, um, a gathering, like a, a fun gathering, sometimes dancing or not. So, would it be customary to have drums? Yes, most of oh, the time. Okay. So that's why I said I have my trio and sometimes a quartet because our perc percussion professor, um, he always ad lib the percussion part oh. and with the pandero. Uh, or sometimes he decided one day to use the cajon, the, the box, uh, just because he wanted mm -hmm. to. Um, so these are things that we have, I have presented and I decided to make my own arrangements because it all depends, again, trying to follow the tradition of what musician you have in hand, how can we use the musicians and the instruments that we have. 
Wonderful. And to find your arrangements, you said some of them are available, JW Pepper, but you also yeah. have, can email I, you directly. You can email me directly. They okay. will be available in JW Pepper. It's just uh, I'm still <laughs> not, <laughs> not available online yet, but it, it's going to be. But I'll be happy to share what I have. Wonderful. All right. Well, we thank you so much. Are there any other questions? Um, I will check Facebook here and also the chat here before we sign off. Also, just as a reminder, this uh, lecture is going to, is being recorded. It will be uploaded to the Puerto Rico Collaborative Piano Institute YouTube page. These will all be private listings um, for now. So if you would like to um, have access to those, please um, email and uh, info at Puerto Rico. Uh, sorry, info at Puerto Rico CPI.org. And we will make sure you get a link to those um, to each of those sessions so that you can go back and review and catch more I really of this. I appreciate, appreciate the opportunity for sharing and I appreciate the opportunity also to be part of this uh, conference. And I hope that I can uh, participate in other years and also help with whatever I can with Brazilian music. That's my main research. Uh, my research is also specific of Camar Camargo Guarnieri, which is the second nationalistic generation in Brazil. So, oh, that's wonderful. Okay, well, thank you so much. We appreciate it, and we'll look forward to seeing you again. Y'all have a good day. Bye -bye. Thank you.